Hello, my name is Tyler Gardner, and I will be talking about deer overpopulation in the Raritan watershed today. The purpose of this project specifically is to show the reasons why measures to control deer population should be supported. I think many times people make decisions based on their emotions. Deer are typically thought of as a harmless animal that are enjoyable to watch, and this may dissuade individuals from supporting these measures. Listed on the screen are just a few of the methods that can be used to control deer populations. I will first be examining the ways in which human interventions have exacerbated this issue. The first factor that has led to an increase in deer population is the elimination of deer predators. Some of these predators include the gray wolf, the mountain lion, and the bobcat. However, Due to hunting of these predators and building over their habitats, they have nearly all been eradicated from the region. The only predator that remains within the area is the bobcat, and even they are considered endangered within the state of New Jersey. The second factor that has increased the number of deer is habitat fragmentation. Essentially, as humans have cut down more trees and changed vegetation in order to build houses, malls, and farms, we have fragmented forests. Therefore, what was once one continuous forest is now broken up into disconnected patches of trees. Within the Raritan watershed, there has been a decrease in the amount of forest cover and the majority of the current forest land exists in small patches of forest. The majority of patches are smaller than 100 acres. This may seem detrimental to deer population growth. However, Deer prefer this type of an environment. They are browsers and like to forage at the edge of forests. So while the amount of forest has decreased, the amount of forest edge habitat has increased. Humans have also aided the growth in deer populations by creating a food source for them, particularly in the winter when food would otherwise be scarce. Some of these food sources include shrubs that line houses and bird feeders. Many households have these in their yards for decorative purposes with little consideration to how local deer may be utilizing these resources. I would now like to begin discussing the impacts on human affairs caused by the exponential growth in deer population. The first is the rise in car accidents related to deer. Oftentimes, roads are built along the edge of forests where deer often congregate. As the number of cars and deer continue to rise, these accidents will likely continue to rise as well. The Raritan Basin is no exception to this. In 2013, there were 26,860 deer collisions within the state of New Jersey. More specifically, the counties within the watershed have higher rates of collisions compared to the rest of the state. New Jersey spends about 10 to $13 million per county in central New Jersey in insurance claims related to these accidents. The reason that collisions tend to be higher within the watershed may be due to something previously mentioned, habitat fragmentation. If you remember the picture of the land usage of the Raritan Basin, you'll notice that there is very little land that is considered forest, especially along the river itself. Because there is less forest and more edge, the deer have less space to stay contained within the forest and therefore spread out onto open spaces and streets. Another serious issue is the rise in cases of Lyme disease. Essentially, ticks, namely deer ticks, carry the disease. As the name suggests, they typically reside on deer. When there are more deer present, the amount of ticks increases as well. So when people spend time outdoors, they are more likely to get bitten by a tick. Some of the health effects include flu-like symptoms, migraines, joint pain, and in extreme cases, it can lead to neurological problems, which could result in paralysis. Reported cases of Lyme disease within the United States are concentrated mainly within the northeastern coast. Essentially, the entire state of New Jersey has a high rate of this disease. And we can see in this image that within one county contained in the Raritan watershed, Hunterdon, there has been a significant increase in the number of reported cases of Lyme disease. 
there are also significant financial costs associated with the rise in deer population. As previously mentioned, car accidents related to deer have cost a lot of money in insurance claims. Another economic cost involves farming. In 1991, the loss of agricultural crops due to being eaten by deer totaled more than $350 million in the United States. It has likely risen considerably in the last 28 years. I would like to close with the idea that the actions of humans, what we do, can have significant and long-lasting effects on the surrounding environment, even in instances that would seem to have no obvious negative impacts. So we should always be conscientious of how our actions can have adverse consequences. I also recommend watching a short video called How Wolves Change Rivers, which details the impacts of one deer population control method, reintroducing wolves in the Yellowstone National Park. Thank you for watching my presentation on deer overpopulation in the Raritan watershed.